Introduction Welcome to the United Nations Police English Language Assessment. This assessment consists of two parts, the reading comprehension and the audio comprehension. The instructions to both parts will be clearly explained before we commence. The use of any computer devices, microphones, books, external notes, or assistance from others is not permitted. We expect full compliance and good conduct during this test. Any candidates who fail to observe appropriate conduct will be excluded from the assessment process and the incident will be communicated in writing to the authorities of the member state concerned and to the SAAT coordinator in the UN Police Division. Part 1 is the reading comprehension. You will be given a mission-related story with a question and answer sheet which contains 10 questions related to the key facts of the story. You will also be given a blank sheet of paper for your note-taking. Any notes that you take on the blank sheet you are allowed to keep throughout the exam. Read the text very carefully. You may write on the test as you wish. You will not be graded for any marking made on the test itself, only on the question and answer sheet. After reading the test, answer the 10 questions on the question and answer sheet. Be sure to include the entire key fact in your answer. It is not necessary to write in grammatically complete sentences. It is highly recommended that you use the blank sheet of paper for important notes from the reading. These notes will be essential for part two of the assessment. You will be able to keep only the sheet of paper with your notes for the second part of the exam. Keep the test and question and answer sheet face down until you are asked to start. You will have 20 minutes to complete the reading comprehension. The instructor will indicate when these 20 minutes begin. The instructor will then announce when there are five remaining minutes and when there is one final minute. After the 20 minutes have passed, the instructor will collect the reading test and the question and answer sheet. You will keep the written notes that you made on the blank sheet of paper for the second part of the assessment. Please write your full name, your individual test serial number, and other details clearly in the space provided on the question and answer sheet you receive. Good luck. Introduction This is the second section of the UNPOL Combined Language Assessment. It is divided into two parts. In the first part, you will hear one person describing the mission-related topic you have just read about in the reading comprehension. It will be introduced as the narrative. In the second part, you will hear a conversation between two people who are discussing the same mission-related topic. It will be introduced as the dialogue. Please be reminded that the use of any computer devices, microphones, books, external notes, or assistance from others is not permitted. Candidates who fail to observe appropriate conduct during this test will be excluded from the assessment process. Such actions will be duly noted and communicated in writing to the authorities of the member state concerned and to the SAAT coordinator in the UN Police Division. You will be given a report writing form and another blank sheet of paper. Take careful notes on the blank sheet of paper of both the narrative and the dialogue. Pay attention to the important facts and key information. You will hear the recording only one time. Once the narrative and dialogue are finished, you will be asked 
to use your notes from both the reading and the audio parts to write down your own complete police report. You will have 30 minutes to complete your police report. The instructor will indicate when these 30 minutes begin. The instructor will then announce when there are five minutes remaining and when there is one final minute. Please do not forget to write your full name, your individual test serial number, and other details clearly in the spaces provided on the report writing sheet. Good luck. Narrative. With reference to the fatal traffic accident in City Market on 2 April 2012, the Harbell City Central Police Station commander was briefed by the duty shift leader of the progress in the case. After the preliminary investigation at the scene in the market at 19.10 hours, the police went to the minibus owner's garage located at the address Ocean Street 24. Upon arrival, the police patrol found a man hiding in the garage. He initially refused to open the garage door, but police managed to break into it and arrested the man who appeared to be the minibus owner, Elvis Scale. Police patrol believed that the suspect was preparing his escape. As a result of a garage search, police found one unregistered Beretta pistol, one AK-47 submachine gun, and a box with mixed ammunition. Interrogation revealed that Elvis had stored the weapons since the wartime as he was one of the unit commanders. He wanted to keep it just in case because he did not believe that regular police would be able to maintain public order and peace in the communities. He stated that he had left the keys of his minibus with the conductor earlier, but that he did not expect his conductor to take a drive. When Elvis learned of the accident, he believed the police might search for him, and so he decided to escape. He was not sure of the conductor's exact whereabouts, but he recalled a conversation they had had together in which the conductor talked about his cousin's two-story white building where he resided in Freedom Square. The police patrol proceeded to Freedom Square and demanded access into the two-story White House. When no response was received, they looked around the immediate area and saw a person running through the backyard. The police patrol chased and apprehended him. According to his documents and the description received earlier, the person was identified as John Masters, a 25-year-old minibus conductor suspected of committing the traffic accident which resulted in one fatality. Police could smell a strong odor of alcohol on him. Further tests revealed his blood alcohol content at the level of 0.15%. John Masters stated that one day before the incident, he had had a quarrel with his girlfriend residing near the market, who had blamed him for his inability to earn money and his inability to drive a car. The next day, when riding along with Elvis Scale, he decided to demonstrate his driving skills to her. By the time they arrived at the market, John had drunk almost a full glass of local rum from a flask he had with him. And when Elvis stepped out for dinner, John Masters admitted that he took the driver's seat and drove away. While moving toward the market exit, he lost control at one of the curves in the road and accidentally hit a man near the clothing shop. John then said he crashed into the wall of the shop. He got scared of the consequences and fled the scene immediately. Dialogue Station Commander 
Good morning, Sergeant. I would appreciate receiving the details of that traffic accident. Could you please brief me on the development of this case after the traffic accident scene investigation? Police Chief Leader. Absolutely, Commander. After the completion of investigation procedures in the marketplace, patrol team left for the address Ocean Street 24 mentioned by the witness. We found the garage doors locked, but we could see the light inside. Were you allowed in? No. We demanded entry, but the man inside refused to open the door. In the end, we forcibly broke in and apprehended him. How did the team identify him? We found his driving license, stating his name as Elvis Scale. In the market earlier, the restaurant owner stated that this was the name of the minibus owner. Why did he escape from the market? According to the initial statement taken in the garage, he didn't expect his conductor to go for a drive. When he learned of the accident, he realized that police might search for him, and he decided to escape. Did you find anything else in the garage? Yes. We searched the garage and found one unregistered Beretta pistol, one AK-47 submachine gun, and a box with mixed ammunition. Everything was taken, recorded, and dispatched to the station. How did he explain the origin of the weapon and ammunition? He said that he had been storing the weapon since the time of the war, as he was one of the unit commanders. He wanted to keep them just in case, because he didn't believe that regular police would be able to maintain public order and peace in their communities. Okay, what did you do after the dispatching him to the police custody? Before we did it, we asked Elvis if he knew the whereabouts of his conductor, and he assumed that John Masters could be at his cousin's house in Freedom Square. Are you talking about the big white house? Correct. The two-story white house. We arrived there just when John was trying to escape through the backyard. When we got him, he was obviously drunk. Further lab test revealed that the blood alcohol content at the level of 0.15%. Why did he drive the minibus? He said that the day before the accident, he had had a quarrel with his girlfriend, who had blamed him for his inability to earn money and even drive a car. And what did he do? The next day, when riding along with Elvis Scale, he decided to show his girlfriend that he could drive. When Elvis stepped out for dinner, John, who was already quite drunk after drinking almost a full glass of rum, drove away. While driving towards her house, which was near the market, he lost control at one of the road curves and hit a man near the clothing shop and crashed into the wall of the shop. He got scared of the consequences and fled the scene immediately. Okay, Sergeant. Thank you for doing a good job. Make sure that all documentation is prepared properly for further proceedings.